and Amy hops over here, joins me in a sec. Um, I want to add her here. There she is. Hey, Sarah, how are you? Where is Amy? There she is. Hey, girl. <laughs> I'm really sorry. I had to get socks. <laughs> my feet were freezing. I couldn't do it. If it lasted as long as the last couple have and my feet were cold, I just couldn't do it. My feet are always cold when I get on here. Like, I'm just saying like cold feet, like, ha ha. Mm -hmm. Pun. I guess that's a pun. Is that a pun that I just did? I never do those. I never get them right. <laughs> there you go, Brad. You can fill in sometime. That would be awesome. Heck that would yeah. be awesome. So Amy and I were talking about um, mm -hmm. our purpose and, you know, Agreed. how that often comes out of um, once you find your identity. And although we all know, um, we want to have you all on sometime, kind of like yes. they really need to come out with one of those, um, what the, what's the, the app that we use when we have the meeting things? Zoom. Zoom. They need to make that on Facebook so that you can all be together. Yeah. So, but we were talking about when you, you know, you find your identity in Christ and it is an ongoing process, you know, um, just because you find out who you are and what your purpose is or, or what your, you know, your desires of your heart are, what your dreams are, that type of thing, what your giftings in the things that God's nudged you about your whole entire life and also who you are in him of how, you know, we, we, I don't need to go into this in detail, but, you know, we talked about last week, like, we are his children, we are, you know, we have inherited um, the kingdom of God, and we're trying to bring it here onto this earth. And so we need to be walking out our purpose for him here. Um, we're always changing and growing while we're here. So it's not that we found it. And oh, that's it. Like, as we grow in him, he'll continue to add to us, but we need to be stepping out where we are um, in the purpose that he's giving us for now. And then as our identity grows in him, so will our purpose and he'll, he'll be changing things up and, and doing things like that. So I'm going to let Amy start out with sometimes one of us is given something before the other. And I just love what God gave her before I went into my quiet time. So I'm going to let her start off with that. Yeah, um, I was just kind of in my quiet time and praying and, and something that I really, I guess it's just something I kind of picked up, you know, my spirit is that so many of us want to forego the process, like we do not want to embrace the process. Um, you know, we want all of these um, suddenly things to happen and we forget that God suddenly almost all the time are a process. I mean, they may manifest to us in a suddenly way, but the, the process to receive that suddenly is a process. And so when I sat down in my quiet time, the Lord just dropped this little one liner. He does that to me sometimes. And it was the, how often do we hijack our, um, our purpose with our need for instant gratification and desire to just simply bypass the process? Um, you know, and just recognizing that, that our idea, our finite minds, um, just see the suddenly miracles happening and all those, although those do happen most of the time, it's a process that we right. are, so that we are, um, able to, um, receive it in, in the, we're in the proper form to receive it. Does that make sense? Like I, um, he took me to, uh, yeah, James um, 1, verses 2 through 4. I'm just going to read it. It says, Consider it pure joy, my brothers, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know, because you know, that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete. We have to be mature and complete in order to walk fully in our purpose. Now he will use us along the lines, you know, as we are growing, as we are healing, as he is finding us. Um, but we won't really reach that 
um, there's no real final destination until we get to heaven. But you know what I mean? Like we, in yes. our minds, have this this place where we really see us us going, these dreams and these visions. We really won't get there until he's um, really healed us because he's not going to put us there if we're still wounded and we're, and we're talking to people from our wounds. He's not right. going to in a place where we're going to inflict more pain on others. And so we have to embrace that process. Um, and I think a lot of us, um, we get to this place where we feel stuck and we're stuck because we're not embracing and being thankful for the process. Um, there's so much, so much wisdom, so much um, purpose in the process in and of itself, um, you know, to be able to like get out there and do that thing and, um, you know, once you get to that place, you know, the Lord will move you. Um, you know, if he promised it, he purposed it over your life, he will do it. And, um, and then until we actually embrace and, and, um, express that gratitude for the process, then he won't be able to, but, and that's why I totally repeated myself that, yeah, we'll feel stuck, um, when we're not embracing the process, when we're not just allowing him to do it. And then he will unstick us. Um, and move us when, when we're ready, um, to do that. And, and he will do that. He will continue to move us as we're in this process, you know, because mm -hmm. we're all always still going to be just a little broken and, um, we can still be broken and not wounded. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but it, and we could still be that, that broken, humble, um, thing that the Lord is just molding in his hands and allowing his light to shine through oh, but we're no longer our wounds um, to like the wound others. The wound, sometimes when you're wounded or when a wound is fresh, um, even like a verbal wound, you know, like that makes me think of like if someone like insults you and you're responding for that ins insult that you're, you're in, you're going to be, it's just going to be like a ping pong effect. It's not going to be where you're responding from. If you weren't responding from, oh my goodness, that attack place where they're still hurt. Um, yeah. You know, you just need, you can, you can have be broken, but you can be humbled in your brokenness to want to be empathetic to yeah. others that are walking in the same situation. You know, I, I know coming out of some of my hardest situations, um, I, I could, I didn't speak out of the hurt. I spoke out of the victory and I wrote that somewhere. Where did I write that? <laughs> um, you know, uh, let me think where I know it's somewhere here. Um, and I'll find it later, uh, in our conversation. But uh, while you were talking, it just made me think of the scripture of Ephesians 1, 17 uh, to 18. Um, the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. The eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling. What are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints? I mean, basically, it's just that he's going to give you the revelation and the knowledge of him, in him of what you are to step out into. Um, he's going to be the one that enlightens you and gives you that understanding of exactly um, where you're going. And something you said in there just made me think of, he will be the one that's, you know, allowing you to walk through this process, hearing what it is exactly that um, he wants for you. Yeah. Um, um, go ahead. No, um, Go, go ahead. I'm going to have to look up this quote that I, I had found earlier. I was telling Amy earlier, I've been rushing around. Marty was sick last week and I, we were playing catch up this week. And um, so I didn't get to organize my notes. So they're kind of just in my journal where God spoke them to me. So, <laughs> sorry yeah, I was, page. no, that's okay. I was just reiterating what you were saying, you know, when, you know, the difference with our wounded, being wounded and being broken, you know, 10 out of 10 times when you're responding out of your brokenness, when the Lord's been healing you, you're going to respond, like you said, with the humility and respond out of love. Um, because there's something beautiful that happens in our brokenness um, when his hand is in it, you know, and his hand is just 
feeling that. Um, when we're not responding that way, we're responding to any other spirit that wants to come in, uh, whether it be the spirit of offense um, or all the plethora of others. Um, when those are the spirits that we respond out of when we're responding out of our woundedness. And so um, it's pretty it's pretty easy to, to decide, you know, how am I responding? You know, you, and then that'll highlight, oh, wait, I must have a wound here because I'm getting offended or I'm getting a little irate over this or or um, I'm feeling a little snappy in my response when it comes to the situation. So maybe I am still wounded here. And then when you recognize that, then the Lord will just, OK, thank you for showing that to me. Let's go through that process. Right. So now. I approach this situation, I can respond out of humility and love and not any other nasty little spirit. Well, and that's the thing is that our, you know, we're wounded by the circumstance that happened, you know, whether it was intentional or not intentional, just things that happen, happen in our lives. And, you know, that is not our identity. What happened right. is not our identity. Um, our identity is as the conqueror of that. And the conqueror uses it for God's glory. So, you know, when we're able to use it as a weapon to defend others, bring others up, um, pull others out of the muck and mire that they may be in, that's, that's what we're purposed for through our identity. Our identity doesn't rest in what happened to us. It's in the victory of being the conqueror in it. Absolutely. Know? Absolutely. Yeah. I, as I was studying this, you know, you know, again, I had another one liner and I'm sure I've heard it somewhere else. Cause I'm not, you know, that creative, <laughs> but <laughs> guess you, you know, are. We, <laughs> we get, you know, I, I was thinking about this, you know, sometimes we get in that process and we feel stuck and we're trying to move forward and, and all that stuff. And, and, and then we start looking at the end, at the end zone kind of thing. And the Lord just kind of dumped a couple of things on me. One of them was, you know, there's so many out there just, you know, I got to, you know, get to big crowds and big ministry and big, 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 you know, and, and the Lord just, wanted me to talk about it. I, I don't know why, I don't know who, but you know, he just wanted me to say some, some are called to the right. masses. Hey John. But all, all of us are called to find the one. It is all about our relationship with the one. Like what is who is the one person that's in my life that doesn't know Christ? Um it's always about finding the one. And of course he reminded me of Matthew chapter 18, 12 to 14. He's talking about leaving the 99 to find the one. And I think so many people in this day and age, you know, and I'm going to throw social media into the pot, you know, so, <laughs> <laughs> of so many people focusing on getting big crowds and big following and, and, big this and big that and and we forget about that one friend that that neighbor whatever and and the one is so much more important to jesus than the crowd you know and oh, yeah. um, you know and then he jumped me over to uh um sorry i had a brain fart the story of lazarus and he's he's given me just little bits of revelation here and there um, different angles about the story of Lazarus. And I think about that and I, and I likened it to remind me of just my life, you know, so, you know, all of these things that made me sick and caused me to die, so to speak, he spoke out new life to me. And, you know, with Lazarus, he spoke new life. Lazarus came, kind of came, you know, wobbling out, but he still had the grave clothes on. But once he got those grave clothes off, and I kind of think of that as like our old identity, you know, the grave clothes kind of represent, this is kind of my past. This was those bad choices. This is those consequences. This is all of those things that kind of created the wounds and all this stuff. But once he got all that shed off, what did he do with his life after that? You know, that was his purpose. You know, granted right. the story raised from the dead is just miraculous but we have that every day. 
every person is given that opportunity every day because of the cross and the process that we go through in our Christian walk is getting rid of the grave clothes so that we can walk out and, and fulfill the purpose for which we were called. And so, you know, it's like, it's like, you know, what am I going to do with this new life? You know, I really don't think that Lazarus just kind of went back and twiddled his thumbs after being risen from the dead. <laughs> you know, I think about that and, and it just kind of like wrecks me. And um, well, I think if we're thinking about like rising from the dead, like if we're, you know, we put that in every instance of every little thing. I mean, that can be from um, just being crushed in spirit. Like you're walking into, you know, your job place and someone's crushing your spirit or you, you came out of a hardship in your marriage or you filed bankruptcy and you're just like overwhelmed, depression, anything. And when you're brought out of that, there's just this, you know, you cannot be happy just, okay, well, that's cool. I was just brought back to life. Cause I mean, you really are rebirth through these things, you know, yeah. and you're, you know, a new layer of skin on you and a new, um, you know, just knowing of what our purpose is here. We just begin to engage on a different level and there's just no way to deny, um, being brought back to life you just can't there's absolutely no way yeah you know and i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off no i didn't mean to interrupt you you were you were talking and oh. i just <laughs> no you go no you go no, you <laughs> um you know like when we step out into that unknown because there's going to be a time in this you know process where the lord's going to kind of say hey i want you to kind of do this i want you to step out you know and it's always going to be a little bit unknown, um, you know, so it's going to be under his prompting, under his instruction. And, and then you're going to start to see another level of heaven manifest in your life. Um, you know, the biggest thing that he's really, um, really shown me as I walked through a lot of healing, um, you know, kind of like what we talked about this last time or the previous one of, you know, other people's approval, other people's opinions, mm -hmm. um, showing me not depending on anybody else, only depending on him, him and him alone. Um, because when you depend on heaven, um, your heavenly inheritance manifests out of dreams, visions, mandates from the throne and the treasuries of heaven that are not of this world. Right. And, um, you know, and then he took me to, uh, oh, where's my notes here? Um, Hebrews chapter seven, verse 25, where it says he always, always lives to intercede for us. And when he's interceding for us and we're depending on him and him alone, that purpose is totally fulfilled. And I heard this quote from, uh, Bill Johnson just the other day on this video that completely wrecked me. <laughs> uh, it was a prophetic word that oh, he yeah back when he was like 18 years old and it's never left him. So I totally wrote it down because it was awesome. So here was the word. If you long for me, like I long for you, you will be satisfied. And I think when you get to that place in your process, you know, you find the satisfaction within yourself, within that process. Like I said earlier, you begin to embrace that process. And mm -hmm. then that process just kind of falls into place and you just kind of naturally walk into it. Sometimes it's uncomfortable. Um, but you know, he just, he just does that. And, and you feel satisfied if you're not doing what you see yourself doing in the future because of those dreams, because of those visions, you still have a level of peace and satisfaction about the process and where you're at in it. Right. Right. And I like what Sarah said here. She said, so true. The irony is that by the time um, you get the opportunities you dreamed about, you've normally been so humbled by them that you feel totally unequipped. And we were talking about that this week when we were saying sometimes when we have those insecurities and we feel unequipped, many of us just feel like, okay, well, if, if I'm going to do this, then I need to be like other people and start, 
we try to start emulating what other people have instead of just popping out there and being ourselves. And we begin with Brad saying Jesus plus coffee in the morning brings satisfaction. <laughs> so, you know, um, now I'm sorry, I cannot read comments and then keep going. <laughs> um, but we, we do, we begin to get insecure because it's been such a process that then we begin to think, well, oh, well, I need to be like this person to step out and, and do things. Oh, I want to be a healer. So I have to be like, say, Robbie Dawkins or praying medic or someone like that. And you have to speak like them, act like them and do all of those things. And one thing that I've learned, you know, of course, I thought that earlier on a couple of years ago when I was just going through a, a deep process. And then I really began to realize that my sound's unique for the people that are actually listening to me, you know, and I'm not picking who's going to hear my testimony. I'm not picking who needs to hear it and who will hear it in a way that it will bring victory to them. God's going to make all of that happen. So, you know, if I'm, speaking and somebody else's gifting and their way of talking. I mean, I have a very different way of writing than a lot of other people do. My writing hits some people more so than others and some others the same, you know, theirs hits more. And it brought, brought me back to um, a long time ago when someone brought, bought the same car as me and I was like, Oh darn, I had this, you know, it was like, they said imitation is the best form of a compliment. Well, it is, and it and it's and it's great for the person that you're imitating but it it doesn't compliment you when say like um if amy went out and bought an outfit and she looked amazing in it and i go and i pop out and i buy that same outfit and i wear it it's not gonna you know wear that same way on me i mean you know and so what we have is not going to be put out there for others to hear and see in the same way if we try to emulate. I can't speak like Amy does. I love the way she pulls some things out, but I it's that's not how I I hear things or speak things. And I, you know, as much as I love it, I'm not going to sit here and desire to be exactly like her. I'm not going to go into my quiet time and say, "Okay, God, talk to me like you talk to Amy now." <laughs> um because he's talking to me in a different way that's going to affect my life and others' lives in, in the way that they need to hear it. So we can't, imitation might be a compliment to somebody else, but we can't be imitating them because, um, you know, God was giving me a wheel. I will not, on, a word, I will not honor imitations. I want them to step forward in what I created and purposed them for, not into the assignment of, of another. That job is taken you know, and, and it is, it's taken by somebody else. The dessert chef doesn't walk into the kitchen and try to make the main course. The nurse doesn't try to walk into the operating and do the doctor's job. You know, sometimes they might, but you know, a teacher doesn't drive the kids home on a bus. We cannot be taking others positions that God has given us our jobs. That's not for somebody else. That job description has been filled. So, um, that's just, that was something huge that I got that he just really wants us, um, you know, listening to him. Basically he said, I want others to hear of my love for their uniqueness. There are so many that worry and wait to know certain things and have the ability to do things that others do or speak or a certain way that they act. They are wanting so hard to become like those that I have anointed and already sent out. I want them to rest in their unique gifting and the characteristics that make them who they are. A lot of time is wasted in the waiting to have everything just right or to, to have something that someone else has just because they have already made their way with that. They might. Are you there? Woo. There you are. <laughs> okay. I don't know where that went out, 
But um, so anyway, I just feel like if we all went out and we sounded alike or I tried to sound like somebody else or that our sound would fall on deaf ears. You yeah. know, it's yeah. like, it's like a band that, you know, has a certain sound and, you know, the band begins to break up and they start to scatter. Um, they're not going to draw the, the same crowd and that fan base, you know, that they had may not follow them anymore. Um, just because the guitarist decides he's going to go off and do this, the, the people that followed him in that band will not follow him as a guitarist doing something else. Um, so we really need to stay um, with our own unique gifting. And I can't talk anymore because I'm like getting really <laughs> distracted watching you laugh. Brad, I'm sorry, Brad, I know my laughing distracts you, but these. Oh my gosh, you guys are killing me. Um, I, I love that we've gotten on the subject of sound because that's something that's kind of been coming back to me this week. Um, I know I talked about it um, a while back. Just when you look at the, just the scientific side of sound and frequencies and how each sound and frequencies break through different levels and, yeah. and all of that, that is the uniqueness of all of God's creation and each and every one of us, you know, our sound is unique as unique as, as our fingerprints. And if we don't use our sound that has been given to us, mm -hmm. then there's a whole plane of people that are missing out of what their ears were meant to hear because of our sound. Right. And, you know, can't be trying like you were saying earlier we can't try to emulate other people's sound you know I am not a soprano hello can you imagine me trying to sing soprano or you know trying to preach like someone that you know I'm not a preacher you know so and it's you know like you were saying it, so we have to just embrace um our unique sound um and when we embrace our unique sound then the Lord moves us into our our purpose and, mm -hmm. and walking in our purpose we are then um enabled and and empowered with power and authority in our sound in that place where the lord wants us well and there's an ease with it too i mean if if you're walking in what he desires for you there's an ease in it um and that was something else he said. He said, listen to the desires of your heart, not anyone else's desire for you or not your desire to be like someone else. When you do this, you will hear what I'm asking you to do and what I'm asking you to step into. It will help you make your next step with ease. There is a beat that you will begin to march to, a rhythm that flows that never did before. When you're walking in what he wants for you, there is, there's just a, a beat and a rhythm to something I, you know, and I think about like, you know, how we began talking to one another. There was just an ease in our conversations. Um, we don't always think exactly the same thing, but there was just an ease. There was, there's a flow and, you know, and that's what he's saying, he's saying, um, it is easier to hear me when you are only looking um, for my direction. And I, and when he said that to me, it made me think of, we were trying to think of that game that people played 10 years ago. And if someone thinks what it is, please type it up on here because it's been driving me crazy. The word imitation, I couldn't think of the other day and it took me about 24 hours, but like 10 years ago when people had their phones or their iPods or whatever, the GPS things, and you could like, go find stuff that somebody else hid, like somebody hid this treasure in the city park and you had to go and find the coordinates to get from this thing to that thing to the next thing. You know, you're not going to use somebody else's GPS to find what God is sending you to look for, to search for. Yes, geocaching. Thank you, Sarah. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. <laughs> If my niece Olivia is watching, that was for you. I actually did it on live <laughs> camera. 
<laughs> yes, that's it. So you're not going to be like, oh, well, let me borrow yours, you know, because there's not, it's not going to lead you to the same thing. What you have geocaching down there, Brad, if you guys are just getting it, that really is slower, lower island time. <laughs> <laughs> 10 years later. <laughs> it was fun, Lori. And the girls were really little when it, when it came out. And um, so it was fun to kind of get together with a bunch of little friends and go looking all around the park for silly stuff. So anyway, don't use somebody else's, you know, GPS to find out what God's purposed you for. <laughs> Listen to what he's speaking to you within when, he, when, when you're following what he's speaking to you and you're really tuned into it and you're truly not tuned into what others are trying to tell you. I mean, it's kind of like, you know, Nate Johnson prophesied once over me about um, writing and it wasn't like I needed to do exactly what he said, but there was already that burning desire inside of me to do it. So I knew when he spoke it, that that what he prophesied was going to happen. And, and it did. But um, you'll just you just know, in you, there's just an ease when you're talking. So um, Sarah said, I came from a church where it was easier to imitate what you saw on stage when preaching. Now at this church, I've been encouraged to just be myself. And it's been more comforting. Um, confront. It's been more confronting but so freeing yes i agree um this has been really difficult for me to hop on live and just talk and be me because you know to me i'm just goofy and I, and a lot of times i do fly by the seat of my pants and and i just rely on god to lead me through conversations so trying to have notes and reflect on them if you see me stumbling with it, it's, it's that it's trying to stay on target because we would be off on so many rabbit trails. Hi, Agnes. I would be off on so many rabbit trails. Um, if I didn't, um, and I still am, <laughs> I think blue should be on the show. You know, he should be cause we've had him for a year as of yesterday. Yep. Brad was Brad prophesied blue into my life. <laughs> You were on target with that one, Brad. Best thing ever. Literally, he said if we did not go and adopt Blue the next day, that he and his wife, Pamela, were driving up here to get Blue himself. Yeah. <laughs> so he has been the best puppy. <laughs> anyway. Oh, my. We are really rabbit trailing. Sorry to all those. <laughs> you are no longer Blue. You're right. Marty and I were just saying that, Brad. We were just saying how, like, we come home and some of our days are just really long and tough and you just want to sit there. And he just makes our couch just such a happier place. And he's silly and goofy. I'm really glad that he's there because when the girls go to college in a couple years, I'll need him. And now, see, Brad's got me rabbit trailing. <laughs> it's not your fault, Brad. It's my distraction level. I need blinders. <laughs> Squirrel. <laughs> exactly. Oh, so, my God. you know, it just, I guess this whole thing took me back. We talked about King Solomon, um, you know, last time in, uh, when we were talking about, um, what was, what was that that we were just talking about? Identity, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And, <laughs> oh my, you know, God granted him this wisdom and knowledge that he asked for. And he, and the reason that he was so successful is he didn't sound like anyone else, you know? And then like when I was, um, you know, reflecting on some different things, um, after my quiet time, I opened to the, the visit of Queen of Sheba. And it just really made me think of, you know, how she was just overwhelmed by everything that he had done and everything that he had brought his kingdom into and, you know, who he was and how he reacted. And she just started like, you know, 
she herself blessing him. So I feel like if we're walking in what God purposes us for, and we're not trying to um, be like someone else, or we're not, you know, speaking out of our woundedness, all of that ease doesn't just come in our walk. Things start to bless us, which then, um, you know, that's where you begin to grow and, and, you know, like Brad was saying earlier, I can't remember exactly what you said, but you were saying something about like, you know, so many people are trying to just launch themselves out further than just a first step, you know, mm -hmm. and it would be like, I can't even, I'm sorry, I just can't even think. But, you know, if, you, if you're trying to be and do something more than where he's purposing you for right now, you'll miss your target. You need to do things in the order that he wants you to do them in. And I think that kind of brings me back to something that we discussed early on this week, Amy, is we can miss a stepping stone on our path because we think it's ridiculous or we think it's not worth our time or we think we're beyond that or it's just something that Exactly, Brad. God will lift you up in due time. Literally three years ago this month, you know, we, Marty and I came out of one of our hardest struggles together. And, you know, if I would have taken off running, trying to start a ministry then and, and do things on my own before taking Nate and Christy Johnson's courses that helped me with my identity or learning more about some of the gifting that I was going to be stepping into. I wouldn't be walking this doing lives with you out in ease, which is just yet another stepping stone. And we're very, we're very happy to be right where we are in this, you know, but one of the things that happened early on, even before I'm um, going through those courses and, and healing and all those things was I um, started doing this, you know, selling some health and wellness products. And I almost felt like, why am I like, why, what purpose does this have other than some extra income for me? When it was really the thing that allowed me to start to speak out, um, you know, you had to be, you know, talking to people frequently. You had to go into large groups of people. Um, our local leader had me speak in front of even larger groups of people, like 60 some people. And I was terrified. Again, I almost failed public speaking in college, but because of that stepping stone that really seemed ridiculous, you know, I was given some wonderful products that helped me with my health. I still use them. I still encourage others to use them, but it, it's not something that I do now outwardly because that was a stepping stone. It was a stepping stone for me to understand that I do have a voice, that I do encourage others and I can help them. And it, whether it's helping them with that or helping them walk through depression, finances, uh, a death of a loved one. Um, now I have more courage to do the hard thing that that is. Because it was really hard doing, um, what do they call it? Um, mind blank. It's like when you're selling stuff on social media. Network marketing. Thank you. When you're doing network marketing, it's really hard. You feel silly and foolish. So yeah. if I'm thinking of being that that was silly and foolish, then, I mean, this is so much bigger, um, you know, and you're not you're not silly or foolish for sh sharing your story. Because again, what Amy started out with tonight is your struggle, your circumstances that you came out on the other side with in victory become somebody else's um, prophecy that they can walk into the same victory. Yeah. And, you know, and I love how, you know, you talked about Solomon because he, you know, his dad, King David was like, awesome. You know, he had all these great things, you know, like Sarah was saying, I love that. What Sarah yeah. was saying, he, he defeated the bear and the lion in private. Nobody saw, nobody did anything about it. And then when he defeated Goliath, that was for everybody to see. And, and I think so many people so many times forget that we need to be living kingdom life, not this life and kingdom life is very upside down. 
kingdom life is about service. And I have held on to my little quote here for so long as, you know, are you just as joyful and eager to scrub a toilet as you are to be on stage? If you don't mm -hmm. do that service with as much joy right. and as much, you know, excitement as you would to receive the applause, you know, then <laughs> you're not a microphone. Do you know what I'm saying? You, you, you just made me think of, uh, I had to talk on camera about our new cleanse. <laughs> and how good oh. The cleanse was in all, I'm sorry, Brad, I knew this is TMI. <laughs> and all the benefits of doing a cleanse. So <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm really sorry, but you're cleaning the toilet comment brought me to, <laughs> to some of the things that I talked about on live camera. Yeah. You know, sorry. Yeah, and you know we, we have to keep our mindset of kingdom upside down, you know, that it's service, not show. And yeah. if we, if we want power and authority over many, um, you have to be rid of the desire for power for one yeah. and, and no pride is allowed. Like you can't have pride. You cannot be prideful in anything that you do. You can't be, most people aren't prideful when they're scrubbing the toilet, but a lot <laughs> of people get prideful when they have a microphone <laughs> in their hand and you have to be willing to serve with a microphone in your hand, the way you serve cleaning toilets. Sorry. I can't keep, Amen. Amen. I clean the toilet. Gross. <laughs> you know, nobody wants to do I don't like doing it in my home. I'm sorry for any of you that are just joining. We're not really talking about just scrubbing <laughs> toilets. <laughs> no, we're talking about kingdom life. Um, <laughs> you know, I was thinking through this. I had remembered hearing a, a quote from Joyce Meyer. And it is so <laughs> just like zinger, you know. So I'm going to read her quote because it's just awesome. She says, if you can't take authority over a sink full of dishes, how can you be an authority beyond your front door? That's right. You know, and I know. That's good. I'm kind of That's still good some of out, you know, like I know like mom life, we typically have a sink full of dishes. It's just hard. And especially when, you know, you've got four kids like I do. So that's kind of like, whoa, I guess I didn't take care of the dishes today. Should I, you know, it, it's a self check. It's a, you know, do I, am I really able and capable? Has the Lord really prepped me? to walk further. And that's back to what Sarah was saying earlier. You know, you finally get, through, you know, going through these, these moments of process and, you know, that humility comes in and, and out of that humility, um, it really almost leaves, I mean, it leaves you completely focusing on and relying on God to handle every finite, every, every tiny detail um, in the pro in this moving forward, because now you do, in that humility and in that brokenness, you do feel like, gosh, I'm just not sure that I'm qualified to step forward. So now, because you have that mindset, now you're like, okay, um, thank you, Lord, because <laughs> you're going to do this. <laughs> you know, I think about this all the time. Every time we go to do our, our broadcast, I'm like, uh, well, Lord, I mean, I know you kind of gave me some scriptures and some some really um, cool, like one-liners, and um, but I don't know what you want me to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm completely and fully reliant on you that you know that your words come out of my mouth, not mine, That's because right. mine means nothing, you know. And so I just always, you know, I just pray that as we talk about these things, that I really just felt like there are a lot of people just needing things confirmed for them. Um, I, I really just, you know, my sensors are like, <laughs> my spirit is like, people just are, are waiting in that quiet and, and waiting mm -hmm. in the moment for the Lord to just send them that one thing to just kind of confirm, um, confirm things for them that yes, you've heard him correctly. Yes. He has you where he wants you in this moment. And, um, you know, he had given me a couple of words for, um, someone earlier this week and and every time he does that i just always fall apart because i just am so humbled by it you but don't he fall had apart that. he <laughs> never <laughs> <laughs> um 
um, he had me go back and, and write it down. And so I'm just going to share that with you. And then, um, and then maybe we can just, um, pray and, and close up for the night. Yeah. So here's what he had me write. He is healing hearts right now. May your hope never be hindered by disappointment ever again. And then the next one, all the tears you've cried were not wasted. They were seeds in the kingdom. Acceleration is hitting and you'll be harvesting each tear. And then the other one, I think this one really kind of hit home for me. Um, just with a lot of the, the battles that we've been fighting over the last couple of weeks um, and seven years. <laughs> <laughs> and seven years. It really hit home. Um, so he said, strongholds and blockages are being removed. Absolutely Woo. removed. The courts of heaven have heard your cries and all word curses and blockages that have held you up and held you back have been declared null and void. All power that they held before has been mm -hmm. erased. And he is redeeming the time and everything else that has been stolen and ripped away and stalled for you. And he also said, you are released. So Woo. all those chains from the past that have felt as though they were choking you out and holding you back, they are being released right now. And um, I just felt like, you know, this, I, I, this moment, this season, this whole, I just kept hearing marching forth for this month, yeah. just marching forth that there is this um, this moment of acceleration that I'm really feeling over the entire body of Christ. You know, he's really spent a lot of time over the last year just really prepping a lot, like the whole body. He's prepping yeah. us all. And he, there's just this, you know, like how you feel like when you accelerate in the car where you just kind of feel pushed yeah. back. That is what my spirit has been feeling for like this last week and a half, just this acceleration. And it's just getting more and more intense. And um, I just felt like, you know, a lot of us need to hear that as a confirmation. Like, yes, he is moving us. He is moving us forward. And I really feel like there's like a rapid pace. Like this other word that I've been hearing, a rapid fire. You know, he's just rapid fire. Um, right. Words and these, and these manifestations, um, these answers to prayers that you maybe forgot you prayed. Um, or maybe you haven't prayed in a while. And maybe you just started praying them. I just felt like these rapid fire things, but all these rapid fire manifestations, again, back to what we were saying earlier, it's been an ongoing process. It's been, you know, all this getting you ready to receive, right. you know, cause I know I, me personally, I could not receive what he's shown me in my dreams and my visions. I would not be able to receive what he has if he had not prepared me. And I think that, you know, he's really prepared the bride for this month and and you know the end of this month beginning the very beginning of next month is is easter and there's something just so significant about that he hasn't really downloaded all that to me but i just felt to share that with you um well, don't you feel ask, like you know with, ask him but with easter like falling when it does this year and you know you talking earlier in the conversation about you know um it's upside down the kingdoms upside down from what we experience, you know, here that if we flip even the smallest thing right now, because of this is how it feels. If we take March and we say that instead of, and like a lion out, like a lamb, like, no, let's, let's go into March like a lamb and let's flip that to kingdom yeah. and go out like a lion right into the resurrection of Christ and the, you know, the renewing of all of us and stepping into new things and new life and all that he's purposed us for. I just, every time I think of March, I, I hear it flipped backwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he reminded me of this um, vision I had, I guess it was last year where um, <clears throat> it was like all the massive angels, but they were wearing um, like that, that, um, battle gear you know like mm -hmm. the old ancient battle gear, yeah. you know the iron all the stuff but they they were like marching down this aisle and 
um, it was really regal, um, like, like a wedding march. And, and I could just feel the rumbling in my spirit, you know, like just the booming sound of their, of their feet hitting the ground. And, and I think I really truly believe, I mean, he had a word for me back then that I shared, but I really felt like he reminded me of it because like that's happening now. Like it's that I, I feel it again. And, um, mm -hmm. and I just, I think, you know, I just keep hearing like, just get ready, get ready, get ready. Like Ooh. something massive is happening. You know, I just really feel it. Like just that breakthrough that we've all been contending for for a while. Like I really just like hear and see like these things just shattering and breaking, whether it's chains, glass ceilings, whatever it is, it's all just shattering and breaking. And um, I, I just, yeah, I, I think we just end it there <laughs> just hearing i'm yeah. hearing that is it amanda cook that sings um well i mean not the original artist but um i just love listening to her on bethel bethel um no longer slaves no longer slaves no, no longer slaves we're no longer slaves to you know everything that's bound us down and kept us where we are um what are you thinking about um i just kind of pray and i'm just seeing if the Lord wants to invade. He's always, no, I just, there's someone. I dropped my journal and, uh, and it opened to November 17th, 2017 and said, Lord, I am anxious to serve you and serve you properly. I want to do it with integrity and honor to bring glory to your name. Help me to remain true to who you desire me to be. I think that really needs to be our prayer all the time. Like, just help, help me to remain true to who you desire me to be. You know, I, I want to remember that in not just my purpose, but in just every conversation I have, everything that I do, every toilet I scrub. <laughs> you know, remind me to be <laughs> true to who you desire me to be. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I think that's all the Lord really wanted to share tonight. Um, if there's, I think too. Oh. We, got, we can pray for you guys. Kim said for the past two months, the Lord has shown me a shattered blown glass vessel and from it, he made a beautiful mosaic. He put all the pieces together with gold and his light shined through it. Oh, wow. It is mm. so beautiful. Kim, that is so cool. You know, a vision that I actually had was, um, wow, I that just reminded me. I was getting ready the other day and all of a sudden I was taken into like a col the, the kaleidoscopes that we had as a kid. Remember those? Like, yeah, they were like we're made out of like cart cardboard mine wasn't fancy but I remember mine was like blue it had writing on it whatever but when you looked at it in the light it just took these fragments of pieces of just you know probably remnants of leftover plastic from something back then because everything was reused and repurposed and and it just you held it up to the light you held us up to Christ and he's going to shine through us. And yeah, Kim, wow, that totally makes sense to me now. Because I was like, why do I keep seeing this? And I literally saw myself in the kaleidoscope in all these fragmented glass pieces. And, and God could just keep turning me to and manipulating me in a way that he wanted me to be, not how, how I wanted to be. I love that. So that's really cool, Kim. Thank you for reminding me of that because I'm going to write that down. I completely forgot because I was in the middle of something and never wrote it down. Yes, we are his masterpiece, Ephesians 2.10. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Awesome. Does anybody have anything specific they want us to pray over this evening um, before we head off here? I didn't even notice how late we were keeping it tonight. It was a lot of fun tonight. Oh, and Sarah, you know, I've heard of that. Um, I've heard of that app that you said earlier, that, that live thing where you can have multiple faces and you have to do it from your laptop. And I want to do it sometime, but I need to do it maybe on a week that um, Amy is hosting. Um, 
because I worry about my Wi-Fi. Because if I just dropped off as one of the people, it wouldn't matter so much as if I dropped off if I was hosting it. So we should try it one week when you're hosting, Amy, because that would be okay. a lot of fun to start pulling some other people on. Yeah, so, absolutely. Absolutely. So Sarah felt a baby start to jump as we were talking about something. Cool. Mm, love love you guys very, very much. You know, yeah. I just, um, you know, I just want to like pray over everyone that we can strike down any discouragement that anyone um, is walking into, um, that we have the patience for God's perfect timing, you know, and that, um, that we lift our eyes to him above everything that seems to be in our way. Don't look at everything that seems to be in our way. If our eyes are looking up to him, those things will disappear as we walk into him. And I'm just praying that anyone that's facing discouragement, anyone that seems to be coming up against roadblocks, we completely understand. We are not talking from a place where things just flow freely and easily. I mean, Amy and I've just been severely attacked in different areas of our lives yesterday and today. And, you know, but we're just keep marching forward. Just as you said a minute ago, we just keep marching yeah. forward. We're going to keep marching forward. Nothing is going to take my faith and hope away of what God has promised. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so um, Sarah said she'd actually like to be prayed for for preaching on Sunday. You've had a, hey, Sarah, just to give you some encouragement with that, literally like I, Marty and I've been working a little bit of crazy days here trying to catch up and I was so rattled. Like Amy was off at one of her kids functions at school. I'm coming home from work. We both are like, our notes don't make sense. They made sense three days ago. And I was just like, Oh, if the electricity and the internet and everything else could just, you know, fall apart tonight and then we would have an excuse. That would be great. <laughs> but, um, <laughs> You can, we, I was, I was feeling very, very discouraged by the end of today, very discouraged and really, truly not feeling like I could even make sense of anything when I hopped on here. So I'm going to be praying over you, Sarah, you know, we pray for clarity as you get up there. We pray that God, you know, aligns everything, you know, in your heart, your mind, that everything that you speak comes out in the order and the way that he wants you to say it so that when you're speaking, that it's spoken to those people that he wants wants your words to come to and, and, and for them to hear what you're, what you're saying, because he is going to be speaking through you. You have no fear, no fear as to what is, what is to happen that day, because he will fill your mouth with those words. Yes, it has gone haywire, Sarah. I think that there's a severe attack just on everybody and everything. I think because of what is about to um, actually manifest in the natural that's happening in the spirit, I guarantee it absolutely guarantee it yeah absolutely there has been so much um i said it just i think i have uh saying to someone today um where it it has felt like every little thing that you say and do everywhere you go there's like all these little things just like hitting you like a barrage of attack you know and it's like the you know like the enemy it's like firing off all of its fiery darts in the dark of night and and you can see all of them and they look overwhelming mm -hmm. and, and they distract you a little bit but the reality is that you know you you snap your fingers you, you click on the light and 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 it disappears you know it's it just the enemy is freaking out right now you know i mean he's been attacking the two of us so so much over the last week and a half, two weeks now, um, whether it's sickness or, or whatever it is. I mean, just a whole plethora of things, but all to silence us. Mm -hmm. And we just sit there and go, you know what? I may feel rattled. I may feel upset. I might feel depressed. I might feel, um, un you know, un ill-equipped. I may feel disqualified to be doing what I'm doing, but the Lord called me to do this. So I'm going to get on here and I'm just going to say, okay, <laughs> <laughs> have at it, Lord. You know, I, I got here. <laughs> now it's yeah. your turn. 
and and in the enemy he is fighting so so hard to get us to be quiet he does not want us talking he does not want us praying he does not want us writing he doesn't want any of this to happen because as soon as it does watch out you mean yeah. i mean how many people are going to have some truth and revelation break into their life um over tonight and how many yeah. people are going to get set free and and find breakthrough and revelation over what you have been given to share sarah and and everyone else i mean whether it's just conversation in the workplace or phone call or family member or whatever you know we have that sound to release and it's going to set people free and break Absolutely. things and everything is getting more and more. i just feel like everything that we say and do is becoming more and more powerful because of what heaven is doing right now this whole marching forth this breaking through um, all of these things have been holding the church back for so long. You know, we're finally out of our identity crisis that the yeah. enemy has hit us with. And now we know who and whose we are. Mm -hmm. Watch out. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> Sarah's it, saying it's so true. I know yeah. it's because I'm going for the jugular, jugular on Sunday. Um Yes, we really do. We need to expose his plans. You know, Amy, so much of what you just said really, really, like, started igniting something inside of me. I just, and it was confirming um, some revelation and, and things that I was having. I just feel like there is someone that is watching, and they are literally terrified of what their next step is. They don't know, and they're unsure. Um, yeah what they're supposed to do and what they're supposed to step out in. And if I can encourage you, God is just asking you to draw into the, his place, into the secret place with him. Go in there, write out what he speaks to your heart. Actually even write out what you're just speaking to his. And when you share, and he'll tell you if he wants you to share it. Sometimes those things are just meant for the two of you. But when you share your heart and what you're talking to the Lord about, sometimes that's what somebody else needs to hear. You know, if you think that he's not speaking to you and you don't have anything to put out there and tell others about, sometimes other people need to hear how you talk to God because they don't know how to go into that secret place and, and, and talk to them to him themselves. They don't know how to begin that conversation with God. So, I'm seeing um, someone sitting and just writing and writing and writing, and they're writing their words to the Lord, you know, and, and, and then he's asking them to put their words out there. Put your words out there. Put your yeah. words out there is what he's saying. Oh, my gosh. Like, seriously, put your words out there. And they're not your words that you're speaking from him. They're not his. He didn't give you a word to put out there, and it's okay. It's okay he's not giving you a word. He wants you to put your words out there because somebody will listen, someone will see, and they will step into not just a relationship with Jesus, but they will begin to believe that he is out there and he is listening to them. And it will be life-changing because they're listening to your words, your words. So put them out there, whoever you are, put them out there. I just, yeah. I'm just praying that over Whoever that is, you know, and if you, if, 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 you know, you want a message and you want some prayer on that, we're happy to pray on you, pray for you. You can message Amy and I together, message us individually, whatever you want. I'm just, it will help set you free. Kim just said it will help set them free. It will help set you free. It will help set, you know, whoever you're talking to free. Um, you know, it just is, the, it starts the ball rolling with, things if he's asking you to do this don't be afraid it will be accepted by the people that it needs to be accepted by and don't worry like if you're just putting it out there don't worry who likes it and who doesn't like it who's seeing it that one person that needs it will see it that day and that's who who it matters but put put your words out there god's saying it Ooh, yeah i wanted to <laughs> i really felt like this fear over that person that they are just being fearful yes. that, that their words aren't eloquent 
or they don't have that lingo or, or whatever they've um, preconceived in their mind um, about what they think their writing should be. So yeah, listen to that word. You just put your words out there. And, um, and I want to speak Psalm 34 four over them. I sought the Lord and he heard me and he delivered me from all of my fears. He will deliver you from your fears of it. As you begin to step out, you will no longer be feel fearful and you will no longer be a slave to that fear. You will not. You Absolutely. Because I, I mean, I, I battled with it too. And I'm just going to share a little bit of testimony to take as your prophetic promise and word of encouragement that, mm -hmm. you know, I battled with that too. When the Lord started giving me something to write, I was so fearful. I'm like, I'm not a writer. I failed every writing class on the planet when I was in school. Right. Like I'm a writer. I'm not a writer. You know, I just had in my head, I'm not a writer. And, and the Lord was like, but I'm telling you to write something. And so then I took it and I was still fearful and I said, okay, Lord, well, I'll, I'll write it down. And then he'll say, well, I want you to put it out there. I want you to share it. Yeah. He wants to read my stuff, you know? And, and, and he was like, it's okay. And then he shifted my vision. Okay. You know what? I'm going to do this because I want to be obedient. I gave you my yes. And as uncomfortable and as terrified as I am, I'm going to put it out there. And then I would just pray, I'm doing this for you. And if it reaches the one person you intended it for, let it reach that one person, you know, and it may be for one person, but I guarantee you it's made for more than one. But if it helps you reduce that fear, just, just say, okay, I'm going to be obedient. Just, just yeah. function in obedience. Don't worry about anybody that's going to read it or not read it. You did something in obedience. And when we walk into um, the obedience of he, you know, if you're going to give him his, your yes, just say yes and do it. And it gets yes. a little bit easier the next and then the next time. And, and you just feel satisfaction with knowing that you're doing what he told you to do. You're not worried about other people's opinions or thoughts or likes or shares or comments. You're just like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad I did that there's a fulfillment that comes in that relationship that you're having with Absolutely. him and he talks, gives you a little bit more. So yeah, just, just push through the fear and I promise you your obedience will break it off. Yes. And, and, you know, I was pulling up some scriptures on fear and I came, you know, to Isaiah 11 too. may the spirit of the Lord rest upon you, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge of the fear of the Lord not of anything else. You shall not fear of the terror by night, nor the errors that fly by day, nor the, of the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor the destruction that lays waste at noonday. In righteousness, you shall be established. You shall be far from oppression, for sh you shall not fear. That's Isaiah 54, 14. Um, you know, this is, I, I just saw where Suzanne said she used to write under the anointing. Um, oh my, Suzanne, I bet you it's incredible. I bet you it's truly beautiful. Would love to see that. Love to see you doing that again. You know that would just be amazing. Who? So yeah, yeah. And um, I just really felt like you should do that. Like maybe go back and pull that out and reread it, and and really just kind of ask the Lord what He wants you to do with it. I, I. Wow, I really just see your seeking heart. Like your heart is just searching for him and everything and wanting him to, to just show you what he wants you to do. And I just feel mm -hmm. like maybe that was for you that you need to go back and pull that out and realize that that anointing over you has not left you. It has not left you. Nope. Circumstances have changed in life, but it has not left you. It is still there and you are now different you are more refined and now it's going to sound a little bit different, but I really felt like you needed to kind of revisit that and take that for yourself that you need to, you need to kind of just let them um, speak with you through that. And I don't know if it's going to be for private journaling or for sharing, but that's a conversation you need to have with him. Oh, and uh, Sarah, I just, you know, I'm thinking about you on Sunday and I'm just going to be, praying Isaiah 41 10 as you're up there fear not for I'm with you do not be dismayed for I'm 
your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand. I will never, ever forget that that was one of the first scriptures. God was like, boom, here you go. Driving down a road, literally terrified about something in my life. And I just was like, God help me look out the window. And there's a Mennonite farm sign that says, I will help thee. Isaiah 41 10. <laughs> I was like, that was when I realized like, you know, you can really have a conversation that quickly with God. So, um, I love that one that just came up, you know, he is your helper. Hebrews, I think that's what Hebrews 13, something or other. He is your helper. So he will help you get through Sunday, Sarah. Yeah, Sarah, I, <laughs> I've been sitting here praying for you because I really just wanted to encourage. Um, and as Anne-Marie was talking, I just saw the word chain breaker over Ooh. you. And I, I just, oh man, I mean, like what you're talking about you are seriously going to be used to just break some people free. I really feel like there's going to be an influx of people that are coming on Sunday to, you know, maybe it's their first time or maybe they're in that time where they're just ready to receive. And, and you talking about these things are just going to shatter um, their preconceived ideas of, of who they think they are, um, mm -hmm. like labels that they've been living under, like that oppression and, I just really feel like the, you're really going to get something massive. Like he's giving you the message, but I really see you stepping to the edge of, whew. Wow. Sorry. Just give me a second. Um, wow. I just had a vision of you walking to the front of the stage. I don't even know what your church looks like, but I'm sure what I'm seeing is what it is. Um, you're walking to the front of the stage and you're standing in front of the pulpit and you've got at least five people in front of you and you are laying your hands on them and he's going to give you words of knowledge and words of encouragement for them. I really Ooh. felt like you were asking him for that, um, that you want that to be a part of how he uses you. And, um, I come really on. just boldness coming over you that the peace is going to come in and through you through until Sunday. And once Sunday hits, the boldness is just going to light a fire over you and in you. And you're just going to step on that stage. And it's going to be like an out-of-body experience. Like the Lord is just going to flood that place. And, um, yeah, I, I really feel like you're going to be just as wrecked <laughs> as the ones that are there receiving the, the healing and, and their new identity, their new life through the word that the Lord's given you. Yeah. Oh, that's good. <sighs> That's really wow. good. Thank that's you, Lord. Really good. Now I can't wait to see this podcast because then we'll know if that's the church you saw. <laughs> I know. I know. <sighs> that's awesome. You. That's awesome. Thank you, Jesus. Boy, Sarah, you got you kept us on here. <laughs> <laughs> You're good for my diet. I haven't eaten dinner yet. <laughs> I have. Oh, uh, oh, boy. Oh, boy. Well, I think... Oh. Um, I think we should wrap it up here as much as I don't yeah. want to. I just love how tonight went. Um, we really appreciate everybody that hops on here and joins in and just, you know, it is really tough for us to hop on here. We're, we're not saying it's an easy thing that we want to do. We are really truly listening. I mean, when this came to us back in November, it was like, really? What? No. <laughs> and, you know, yeah. It is. It's hard every week. We could we could literally have an excuse almost every single week. And so when you guys are on here and you're supporting us and and you're having conversations and and, you know, we love your encouragement just as much as you're saying thank you to us. We absolutely adore each one of you. We really, truly do. I wish we were close enough that we could all be together. Um, I really do. Yeah. Are you crying over there yeah. still? Yes, I am. I always just, every time he gives that to me, I just, I'm overwhelmed. You know, I, love I, it. I was always very emotional, very, very emotional. I still am very, very emotional, but I have found someone that is even more emotional than me. <laughs> and I love it. I'll just, it, love it, it. It's a test 
to what the Lord does when he heals. You know, I had such a hard heart that I had no emotion at all. And now I feel everything. Yeah. So, you know, all oh, that's all God. Yeah. Well, I, oh, wrecks me every time. Well, we uh, thank all of you. We really, truly appreciate you guys. And we will see you next Thursday. And uh, we love you so, so much. We'll talk yes. to, you, to you all soon. Love, love you guys. Bye. Bye.